welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I am your host and resident Gemini Maria Rieger, and today we're talking about how to read Chiron in your child's chart. This subject is at the request of one of you viewers, and I will leave you the link, uh, the direct link below. But first, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for your free, regular Positive Parenting with Astrology content. Now, this topic, Chiron in the child's chart, is a little controversial. First, I want to say that there are astrologers that will refuse to read a child's chart at all, and I can understand why. Then there are astrologers like yours truly who will read a child's chart with many caveats. I want to know, for example, what the purpose is in the parent wanting to read the child's chart. Like, what is the parent hoping to get out of the reading? Is a parent hoping to understand the child to be a better parent? Is a parent hoping to understand the child to make sure the child feels seen, heard, understood, loved? Is the parent seeking to be a better parent for the child the parent has? Not the child the parent wishes they would have had or the child the parent wants, right? Are the, is the parent seeking to be a better parent in respect to the child the universe gave them, right? To understand this child as a sovereign entity. Those are all, in my mind, good reasons to look at a child's chart. But if the parent is looking to validate their own preconceived notions, the chart reading will not be helpful. If the, child, if the parent is seeking uh, like a prediction of what the child will be like or what the child's life will be like, then a reading with, with me will not be helpful. In my mind, reading a child's chart is about understanding and getting a better uh, handle on the child's energy in order to be a better parent to the child, to guide the child through life to have their own experiences as they get older, and to guide the child to use their natural gifts. You cannot force somebody to use their natural gifts, but you can encourage them and guide them to do so. Now, I do not practice predictive astrology for many reasons. I think that it's too easy to get wrapped up in what's going to happen that you're not going to live in the present moment. It's also just too, it gets too fatalistic. We can have a conversation about soul contracts and past lives and things like this. We can have a conversation about events that appear to be fated to you. There are indications in, like when you do a reading for two different people, like in a relationship, there are indications that relationships or other events may feel fated to the chart holder, may feel, get this, have this sense of being foretold, right? Destined to happen. That there's a feeling to that effect does not necessarily make it so. Just because it feels fated, it feels predestined, right? It feels forecast does not mean that indeed it was fated or forecast or predestined. Anyway, I'm not sure what I even think about things like soul contracts, so I don't want to get too much into that. But my point in bringing all this up is to say that it can be very dangerous when we start to use astrology to try to predict specific events or when specific events will happen. The people closest to me know that I love freedom, okay? I love free, I'm all about free will. And I believe that we make our own destiny and that we have free choice. So for all those reasons, I don't like to predict events. I, when I do a transit reading for somebody, I prefer to tell them, uh, instruct them on the energy that's going to be dominant during the transit, what themes may come up for them in the transit, what themes that a transit indicates may be best to work on during that period of time. If it's a very emotional transit, like we're about to have a big uh, solar eclipse on April 8th, that's going to be a very emotional time for most of us, if not all of us. Things like that. So when I do a transit reading for people, I prefer to talk about the things that may come up and the things that they can be working on, possibly some feelings they will be going through. But I'm very hesitant to try to predict events or when certain events will happen. It's really tough to do that. Now, with all that being said, that's our intro to looking at Chiron in the child's chart. When I get questions from parents about Chiron in the child's chart, they're often like, well, I read somewhere that Chiron in this house or this sign or this, you know, making this this uh, aspect to this planet means that my kid is going to have a tough life or means that my kid is going to have mental illness or means that the kid is going to have a really bad relationship with a mother. Okay, first of all, please 
do not do not take astrology guidance from just any source okay i'm gonna put some what i consider to be trustworthy sources about chiron in the video description so please look at that for more information number one number two when we have those anxieties about our kids or you know when we look at things read things about you know natal charts and certain aspects or planetary placements in our kids charts and they're negative we read negative things and we get anxious about it you know that anxiety tends to be projected to the kids if we're anxious about thinking our kids are going to have a tough life or a, or a tough relationship with the mom we're you know communicating that through our energy and our anxiety we are communicating that to the kids and the kids tend to be the kids always rec almost always recognize and feed off of the parents emotions especially when they're younger okay and even when they're older, if the relationship is close, which hopefully it is. So the kids wind up being anxious. For example, if you're worried about something and you convey the worry to the child, you're communicating to the child that there is something to be worried about. Even if you have like a lot of anticipatory anxiety, which I do, um, about future events that haven't even happened yet, that rubs off on the kids and you're communicating to the kids that there is something to be anxious about. There is something to be nervous about. Okay, so you want to be very careful about having that energy and those feelings around you because those things tend to be a lot of the time a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, we give, we attract into our lives what we give our time and attention to. So if you're constantly anxious, constantly worrying about future events, your kids are going to be anxious and going to worry about future events too. And that's going to rob them of the enjoyment of life, of that living in the present moment and learning things. So we want to be very careful about, first of all, reading uh, stuff just from any source and also by the energy. You want to be very careful with the energy that we are exuding and communicating to our kids. And I understand this. I'm a high anxiety person. And when I was pregnant with my son, you know, I was in school, I was working, I had a lot of anxiety about different things. And I swear that that had an effect on him. Now, anxiety runs in my family. So he, you know, it's a genetic thing. So he may have gotten an anxious personality anyway, but my anxiety did not help for sure. So now we're going to get to the heart of the subject. What is Chiron? First, I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of a Greek mythology lesson. I love Greek mythology. I'm a huge Greek mythology, Roman mythology nerd. So I love talking about this stuff. Chiron is known as the wounded healer. Now, Chiron in Greek mythology was a centaur. He was a demigod. His father supposedly was Cronus, one of the ancient Titans. So he had demigod immortal status. So he was wounded. Uh, if I remember correctly, he was accidentally wounded by one of Hercules poisoned arrows. And Chiron tried to tend his wound. He went back to his cave for a long time to try to uh, tend to and work on and heal his wound. He was not able to fully heal it. So this is the important part. He was not able to fully heal the wound and he was not able to die because he was a demigod. Okay. So eventually he got tired of the wound not being healed and he made a deal with Zeus in exchange for his immortality. He would give up his immortality to, in exchange for that, Zeus would would um, release Prometheus. And if you recall, Prometheus, not just, not only is Prometheus the name of um, one of the more recent alien movies, right? Which is, I'm a huge sci-fi fan too. Uh, Prometheus was the one who stole fire from the gods and gave it to humans. And according to Greek mythology, that's why we have fire, right? So you fire signs can thank Prometheus for that. So, um, the deal went down and Chiron gave up his immortality and Prometheus was released and Chiron went to Mount Olympus, heaven, right? So that's the, that's the basis for what we're going to talk about. That's the myth. So Chiron is a planetary body that was discovered in 1977. So this is a pretty recent discovery, by the way, 1970s, great vintage. I was born in the late seventies, so I could say that. So, uh, Chiron was discovered in 1977. It is a planetary body that orbits between Saturn and Uranus. If I recall, it's too big to be called classified an asteroid, and it, but it's too small to be a planet. So it's kind of like, we call it kind of a larger asteroid. So uh, its placement in your chart will determine 
the following. Chiron is known as a wounded healer. It represents for, for the chart holder where the chart holder was most wounded and where the chart holder has the most capacity to heal others. That's the, that's the general consensus, to heal themselves, but also others. So everyone has Chiron in their chart, okay? It's a matter of what house and sign placement it's in for the chart holder, and that will determine how the energy is expressed in your chart and the themes of life that were brought up in regards to your wound. Like in what theme or area of life were you wounded and kind of the overall, what overall general area you were wounded, and also it does give an indication as to the substance of the wound, okay? Now, some astrologers characterize it as such. Chiron is uh, the wound that will ne you will never never heal, but where you have, it gives you the capacity to heal others. I don't like to think about it as the wound that will never heal because then we can't do anything about it. I prefer to think of it as the wound that we will always have with us that we can get past and integrate into our whole being okay so i think with any big wound um like as if you've been watching my channel for a while you know that my father died unexpectedly when i was very young any wound like that you know you don't really get over but you can get past it and you could integrate it into the whole self so it's part of you but you can recognize it and you can live with it so that's how i like to think about chiron Yes, the wound that we always carry with us, but the wound that we have the capacity to get past and integrate into our whole self. And maybe, mo maybe most importantly, the wound that gives us, the area that gives us the most capacity and capability to heal other people. And that, you know, when we heal others, that also gives us the possibility to heal ourselves to a greater degree, okay? Because that's very gratifying. When we help others, we're also helping ourselves. So there is some debate about whether Chiron represents self-inflicted harm or not. At least one astrologer I know who uh, I respect very much believes that Chiron represents only self-inflicted harm in the chart. Okay, a couple things about that. Number one, I have not seen enough patterns or evidence to make the determination that Chiron represents only self-inflicted harm. And secondly, I think that if, if Chiron represents only self-inflicted harm, it does not mean that it, it, the harm was self-inflicted in this lifetime or in this soul iteration. So like many astrologers, myself included, we believe in some kind of, sometimes it's called reincarnation. We think of it as this. The soul is eternal and the soul uh, has many separate experiences on earth in human form. And then at the end of those experiences, the soul is subsumed again into heaven, right? The universe. And then is sent back at when God, the universe deems it appropriate, is sent back to have another experience on earth. Okay. So it is possible that if Chiron is a self-inflicted wound, it was not self-inflicted by the chart holder in the current lifetime. It's possible that it was a self-inflicted wound in a past soul iteration, a past life, and you're carrying the karma forward from that past life. So I want to point that out there if you believe that, and I don't want you to, to spend a lot of time and, and you know torture yourself thinking, well, did I inflict this upon myself and where and when? I don't think that's uh, a worthwhile exercise. I want you to not focus on the past, but focus on the present and the future. The bottom line, Chiron represents where we have experienced our deepest pain and our deepest vulnerability and where we have the greatest capacity to heal others. And also where we have the most potential for growth. That's another uh, thing, I, that's another way I like to think about it, the most potential for growth. So bottom line, Chiron in our chart represents where we have experienced the deepest pain where we have the deepest vulnerability and where we have the most potential for growth, for transformation and for healing other people. To look at uh, your areas of potential for growth and transformation, you wanna look at Chiron, you also wanna look at Pluto in your chart and possibly any planets in the sign of Scorpio. Um, this touches a little bit on evolutionary astrology, which is largely the study of Pluto and the 
developments of Pluto in your chart. Okay, but that's a whole nother branch of astrology that we don't have time to get into in this video. So I like to look, when I look at Chiron in the chart, I like to look first at the house position of Chiron because that will inform the areas or themes of life that Chiron touches. So if the chart holder has Chiron in the seventh house, the seventh house is the house of relationships, one-to-one -one relationships, largely the house of the other, the other person in the relationship. So a couple things, the seventh house, usually whatever the chart holder has in the seventh house affects the other person in the relationship. So if the chart holder has Chiron in the seventh house, that means the chart holder was deeply wounded in regards to relationships and also has the potential to wound others in relationships, but also has incredible potential for healing others in relationships, okay? So that, that from that angle, it's very positive. So for example, if Chiron were in the 11th house, which is the house associated with the sign of Aquarius, the house of kind of society, social groups, friends, acquaintances, that kind of thing, the chart holder may suffer in isolation and the chart holder may also have a wound regarding how they fit into society at large. They may feel like they don't fit in. They may have trouble fitting in. They may have trouble identifying with the group and their place in the group. Chiron in the fifth house may represent some kind of wound regarding childhood. It may be the chart holder's childhood, although the fourth house is generally what we consider to be house of home, family, and childhood. The fifth house, which is the house associated with the sign of Leo, uh, rules children rules fun, rules amusements, things like what we do for fun, right? Um, so Chiron in the fifth house may indicate a wound related to childhood. It may indicate a wound related to the chart holder not feeling worthy, like to have to practice self-care. They may not feel like they should be taking care of themselves. They may feel guilty for taking care of themselves and practicing self-care. They may feel guilty when they have fun or when they do things just to have a good time that have no practical purpose. They may have a hard time enjoying life because they may feel unworthy. They may equate life with suffering. Life is suffering, right? But life is not only suffering. Okay, so those are some examples of when we look at Chiron in the houses. When we look at Chiron in the signs, it gets a little bit more detailed. We don't have time in today's video to go through Chiron in every sign. That is possibly a good topic for future videos. Uh, if you guys want to see more videos about Chiron in particular signs, please leave your comments below and I will do those videos for you. For example, we just did a, a video on how to parent your Taurus child. So I'll use uh, Taurus as an example here. If the chart holder has Chiron in Taurus, now Taurus is, as we talked about in the other video from the other day, Taurus is fixed earth and Taurus children need predictability, stability, they need dependable parents, they need consistent parenting, they need consistent communication and consistent emotional states from parents. So Chiron in Taurus may indicate that that char holder did not have the stability they needed at some point in their life. Could have been early on, it could have been later. They did not have people they could depend on. They did not have security. It's possible they did not have or feel that they had material security. It's possible that they felt like they did not have enough money to live or enough, they didn't have proper housing, things like that. So that's an example of Chiron and one of the signs. So it can get um, detailed and it's important that we don't project too much when we're looking at children's charts because depending on the age of the child, they still have a lot of life experience to have, okay? But it does give you an indication of where their vulnerability is. And knowing somebody's vulnerability is, you know, it's good to know to connect with them, especially if we're parents. We want to be sensitive about those topics our kids are most vulnerable about. And we also want to be able to connect with our kids. So, Remember, as Brene Brown says, you know, vulnerability is power. It's really hard, if not impossible, to connect with people and have real like emotional intimacy in a relationship. I'm talking now about adult relationships. It's hard to have that level of emotional intimacy if we're not vulnerable with each other. And it's hard to be vulnerable, okay? And it's okay as a parent to be vulnerable with your kids as long as, you know, it's done in an age appropriate way, depending on the age of the child 
and you're not burdening them with too many adult topics, but it's okay to show vulnerability as a parent. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. It can be a very deep subject. I wanted to give an overview of that. Again, if you're interested in seeing videos on Chiron in the houses, in the signs, please leave your comment below and we can do that. If you have any questions, leave those below and we will be back soon. Thank you very much.